Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Show. You've received things like this in the past if you've ordered something from uh, the US, and it's got this annoying two pin adapter. However, you notice the adapter itself is 100 to 240 volts. In fact, I'll show you what that looks like in case you've got one, in case you ought to check that. You can see right there by my little finger, 100 to 240 volts. So the problem with this, of course, in the UK, to plug it in is a bit of a pain and you've got to use some fairly unwieldy adapters and uh, adapters I don't seem to have at hand at the moment. So what I'm gonna do is actually um, try to make something using one of these plugs. And I've got a standard sort of British plug. And it's a really old one, because I don't want to kind of waste a, a good one. Not that I've got a good one to spare, to be honest. <laughs> Look at the bloody screwdriver I'm using to undo it. Um, to see if I can adapt one. Because I figured you could probably somehow get this in through the back or underneath it somehow. I'm sort of eyeballing the actual likelihood. Maybe, maybe I've just got it totally wrong. But I kind of think... Hmm, so by the way, these aren't fused anyway, so technically you don't need the fuse, but you can see the pin spacing here between those two parts. It's somewhat similar, so I kind of think if you could get it through the shell and fix it in a good way, you pretty much could make your own. Just check one more idea. Or you could have it sticking out the bottom. Let's see, how thick is that? So yeah, I kind of think that would work if you've got it sticking out the bottom somehow. So let's begin. Let's begin. First things first, I'm just going to dismantle that because we don't want that fuse. I mean, it'd be nice to keep the fuse, but as I said, it's not necessary, so why have it in there? So just unscrew the terminals. Let's see if we can get that out. So don't do this, by the way, at home. It's pretty dodgy. I mean, your end result also won't be up to sort of code, but I'm sort of just doing it as a curio. You can see here, by the way, there's a, a, a tang a sort of rivet for that fuse holder. So I don't know how easy that will be to remove. So just leave that for there for now. And then this is sort of Baker-like material that we're gonna have to mince our way through. So I think though, if I can just get that actually, hmm. Hmm, interesting. If I can actually get that through here, and that looks to be about the same thickness, I should be able to solder wires to those terminals. Actually, just use that. I could probably even keep the, uh, the few little fuse in there. So let's get our rotary tool kit out. If you haven't got one, they're quite handy and you can get them pretty cheap. I bought this one from a car boot sale. It's in one of my earlier videos. I think I paid around, I don't know, was it? two pounds or three pounds it was some obscene uh, obscenely cheap amount for the amount of use i get out of it so you can uh, find them clearly people aren't whoa hello try not to leave them on when you put them away and we'll crank that bad boy in fact i'm gonna give it a little bit extra crank now we've got that on the desk so our plan is going to be to get this kind of anywhere here really. It doesn't seem to matter too much because there's not really anything it can touch apart from the strain relief contact which we'll probably remove anyway. So let's line it up by my eyeball that's saying there just above where it says fused. And we'll just mark that out. See if this pen will mark it. Of course it won't. Who needs who needs marks? So you can see I'm taking a lot of care here on uh, how I mark this out. So <laughs> I think that's going to work out quite well.
Okay. Just a teeny, teeny bit, and I think we're ready to go. These are a few of my dangerous things. <whistles> this tool, by the way, is insanely good. It's actually a milling bit from my T8 micro milling machine kit that we built. And uh, these cutters are just so bloody good. They're so useful, basically, because they're so sh they're very sharp, and uh, you can do a lot of going around the corner type stuff with them. So I'm just trying this now, just testing out this main screw here. Yeah, it's actually looking okay. I, th I see there's a gap now. It's sort of been pushed out slightly. Tiny bit more. I thought I'd have a little clean up. It's getting a little bit too dusty. I could feel my lungs sort of not appreciating that. So what I'm gonna do, before I put this on, because it's sort of gonna be permanent, I'm gonna remove this paper from the fire stick supply. There we go just because it's going to be hard to take that off afterwards. Give it good old dust. <laughs> now my thought process is this. Wedge that in good and proper, like that, okay? It won't go in really any further. In fact, will it or won't it? Let me check. No, it's pretty much in there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply solder to these terminals so that it can't ever be removed. Do you see what I mean? It'll act like plugs. It'll be almost riveted in there using some solder. So that's going to be my plan. So I'm just getting plenty out. Setting the iron to, let's give it 390 so it's got a little bit of extra juice. Juice in its caboose. And what I've noticed though, the, <laughs> my iron is, uh, the screen is dimming when it's heating. I wonder if it's uh, kind of coming to the end of its, its life. I hope not. So let's just apply the some solder. I'm going to turn it that way so we can both see it, you and I. And we're just going to heat up because this is baker light -like stuff it shouldn't melt yeah you can see it's pretty much heat resistant so at least the uh, I can hold the soldering iron fairly close to the edge of the workpiece without it worrying about it sort of melting something now I'm just feeding in the old solder okay we've got a good layer going that's a fair old blob now on that side Got to be careful actually, it's taking solder so well you can think it's it's transmitting that heat down into the uh, actual device itself. You don't want to sort of desolder the device from its internal, so be careful with that. And that solder blob is staying hot, I could see it's still molten. Um, so it's going to work quite quickly on this side. I don't want to really add too much more heat into that joint. A bit more for luck. That'll be it. Let's leave that. Let that cool down. Still molten indeed. I'm just going to put pressure on here now. While uh, Let's use the opportunity while it's still molten to actually get this sitting nicely in position, the exact position we'll want it to be. And if we find, I see it's just changed colour, it's just solidified. And if we uh, find we need to make some adjustment afterwards, we can probably bend these pins ever so slightly. So that's one side. And you can see there's a little gap here. There's just a little bit of spring there. We need to just push that ever so slightly. A bit of spring in the uh, metal contact. But boy, that's not going to ever be... <laughs> You're never going to be able to pull that out. Look at that blob. Huge. Locking that in. Get the other side done. Kind of blind here. I'm using it at an angle, which... Uh, the iron at an angle, which I can't see. No, that's no good. It's got to keep me eye on it. Sorry, guys. I thought it'd be better. It'd be easier for you to see, but no, too difficult for me. <laughs> Turn it this way. Let's try that again. Uh, 
Uh-huh. Don't know, this is really weird. This contact's not taking any solder. Let's see if we need to heat this up. Strange, because the other side was so good at it. This side uh, doesn't seem to want to know. Slightly different quality of plating, perhaps. Right, there we go. It took it, though. It got there in the end. So it's just starting to deposit now. I can just feed it into this kind of molten blob. It's super good at holding the heat. Right, that's a huge blob. Let's just apply one to this side as well. And remember, what we're going to do is once we've got this solder taking, while it's still molten, I'm going to push down on the whole plug to make sure it's where I want it to be when it hardens. sizzling away. I can see it bubbling. I think there's some sort of juice coming out of this material. It's, it's releasing some sort of compound there. Right. Just good. Just seeing there's some a little bit of movement, but it's just it's movement, mechanical movement basically. I'm just checking it's not this portion sort of desoldering itself, so it's it's ending up loose. That's fine. So that can go in there. Now something here that's making our life a little bit difficult is this not this this particular thing I'm removing, but a bit I'm just about to remove, and that's the main screw. Because the main screw is captive, when we're doing our little tests, we're always having to screw that screw just to see if we've got a fit. So it's probably got a fibre washer. It does look like a fibre washer. We're just going to remove that. And give it a little cap. go. It's being very tenacious for a washer that's been cut. <laughs> I commend you on your tenaciousness, Mr. Washer. So that's how that will fit in there and then we're going to need to put up something to plug that. I we'll we'll wonder about that last detail in a moment. So, questions. Do we try to put a wire from here to here? Hmm. Or do we try to solder it? I kind of feel that it's... Can I solder it down here? <laughs> Maybe. It's almost a shame because some of these plugs, you can actually push these through. In fact, should we have a little go on this? Because if we can, that would be so much easier for us. I suspect something that's taken that much battering is definitely not going to want to go through. Shame. Okay, we have one more option. It's a really easy option, actually. It's so simple. Instead of soldering this to this, we're just going to mechanically adjust this. So this is a spring steel. We're going to bend that that way. So that's going to be well pinchy on that side. Yep, that's good actually. So now we need to achieve the same on this side. And what we can do, if we use that as a terminal, we'll make sure that's tight because we want it to loosen. Because this side is also a spring steel, as you can see, because of course it's a plug. If we're very careful, we get a little bend on it like that. We want to make sure it's reasonably good. You don't want it to be shortened or splattering or anything. I think that's it, actually. I think that's connecting. Okay. We could do a little test first before we go any further. So we've got our plug.
seeing what we've got here. Ah, we have our quick tester. But we need something to plug this into. We have something that's just long enough. Right, let's go. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, it works. You've got the device working. You can see it's there just about. I was going to say clearly, but it's not really that clearly in this light. However, trust me, it is on. And uh, you can just, to be honest, I wouldn't really recommend removing it by pulling this part. I'd rather work with the plug, but <laughs> that works. That's a solution. I'm really quite pleased because I've got like my Nintendo Switch. Uh, from the US and that's got the same problem. It's just all a big problem Although maybe that one I might leave it because you might want to want to use it when you get to the US So I'll be short, but these I'm not too bothered about. So the only thing that remains now is to find something um, Electrical proof there you go insulating to fill that hole and uh, I'm just looking for s oh mm. Isa I Misa thinks this will do so that's a bit of glue gun glue so I'm just going to I'm just going to cut that now with this some scissors if I can find some uh, let's hope that's there we go and that's it look at that it's a shame this isn't black it'd be all nice but look this is a really old plug because you can see it's got these contacts and these have changed because in the olden days you could have your fingers there and ah but I think I think it suffice for hidden behind the telly where I intend this to be. But that's how you do it. That's pretty cool adaptation. So I've taken a bit of old technology and a bit of modern technology and combined them into a solution. A USB powering solution. As ever, thank you for watching.